Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm, uh, I'm in our heifer barn here with Ian today. Just uh, wanted to do a quick Q&A video for the last video that came out. Uh, there was a couple questions that I wanted to talk about, so it'll probably be a pretty short video here. Uh, the first question that I wanted to talk about was uh, how we handle price fluctuations since we don't have a quota system here so the price can go up and down quite a bit can vary from year to year month to month uh, so there's a few different ways that we can do that uh, we do a lot of uh, forward contracting on our farm so basically what that means is we're uh, setting a price into the future months um, when we get to that month that's what our price is for a certain amount of pounds of milk that we decide to uh, price at and that costs us a little bit of money to do that, but uh, We always like to do at least some of that uh, Because it's sometimes it's better to uh, Know what you're gonna have and pay a little bit for it rather than take the risk of having the markets uh, Crash on you and then it's too late to do something at that point um, There's a couple other different things. So there's some uh, di a government program called DMC uh, so basically what that is uh, it's more geared towards smaller producers like 200 cows and less it's a lot more uh, affordable so you're you're kind of buying uh, insurance and if uh, if the price of feed goes really high or the price of milk goes really low it's based off of feed and milk and if that uh, difference gets too high we get paid a certain amount for 100 pounds of milk so we, we sign up for some of that, but it's really geared more towards smaller farms. And then there's a, another option called DRP, which is another, uh, it's kind of like insurance. So we're able to, if we decide to go to buy DRP, so all of these are voluntary and some producers do some of these, some do none. Uh, we, we like to do some of all uh, usually. But what DRP is, is uh, the same milk is $19. We can buy DRP for a certain amount of pounds to protect 95% of that $19. So if milk drops below that point, we'll get uh, paid out. But it's, yeah, like any insurance, you're, you're paying a premium for that. And it's, uh, depending on where the market is and how volatile the market is, that premium can be fairly high. So it, we typically do uh, some of that and some forward contracting. We'll do some together. Uh, we like to do DRP because it gives you upside. So if the market goes up, you get to take advantage of the upside. But if the market goes down, uh, your DRP will kick in and you've kind of set your floor basically. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we're, we like to do some of that and really our, we don't have a set marketing plan, but really what we try to do is just try to be consistent. So if we're, we're always doing some forward contracting and we'll typically do some DRP, not all the time, but we always try to protect the price on uh, 25 to 50% of our milk. And if we feel that the price is at a good point, we'll do more, but we don't usually do less. And at the same time, if we lock up milk, we try to lock up some of our feed prices as well because that's our, our main input is feed. So if we want to do milk and feed together. That way it uh, reduces the amount of uh, surprises that we can have, reduces the amount of uh, highs and lows that we have, I guess. I mean, we'd, we'd always, obviously we'd like to have all the highs, but that's just not realistic. We're, we're more interested in trying to protect protect us from the lows I guess if that makes sense to you guys uh, and the other the second question that I I wanted to answer that somebody asked and I didn't really know myself either I had to ask my parents but somebody asked about taxes so I, when we left the Netherlands and then Canada again you sell the farm and then you have to pay some taxes before you're basically before you're allowed to leave the country and uh, take your money and uh, invest it in another country so it uh, it's yeah there's not really a straight answer for it because it's it's going to be different for every farm because uh, it's uh, 
it's not you know a set percentage okay this is how much tax you're gonna pay if you sell your farm in the Netherlands it's kind of uh, what do they call that capital gains tax it, so my, my parents didn't uh, inherit the farm they bought my grandparents farm so that would make their the amount of taxes they paid less than say somebody that inherited 100% of their farm and then went went on and sold it but uh, my mom was thinking it was around 15 to 20 percent in the Netherlands and around 10 to 15 percent in Canada which I mean it nobody wants to pay taxes but I guess it's if you if you want to sell your business or your farm and move to another country and take your money with you I guess that you have to deal with those rules with those laws and yeah that's that's about what it was and yeah that's you can't you can't get out of uh, paying those taxes I guess it just was what it was you paid it and moved on I guess so and those were the the couple questions I wanted to answer for you guys uh, if, you, if you do have any more if you have any more about what I said here today I'll try to answer them in the comments otherwise we'll uh, hopefully see you in the next video on Wednesday so uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll see you then can you say bye Ian can you say thank you for watching? Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.